All right, so some of you might be at the point where you've built a few projects on your own and you're ready to start getting some real experience, but you can't really get experience because you don't actually have any experience to prove to people that you're worthy of gaining more experience from them. So I wanted to talk about a few things that you can do to try to build some experience as you're learning how to code and possibly even make a little bit of money while you do it. Now, the truth is you're probably not going to make much money when you're first getting started and you're just trying to gain experience for the sake of getting experience. But it is nice that a few of these methods that I'm going to mention are capable of making you a little bit of money when you're first getting started. The first method of gaining experience that I would recommend for anyone who's learning how to code and has just built a few projects on their own and is ready to start tackling some real tasks is open source projects and open source software. Open source software is software that's developed by a community of developers that contribute to these projects and you can contribute to any open source project that you'd like now as a beginner you might not know what open source projects you can contribute to honestly the easiest thing you can do is just google search good open source projects for beginners many people have made lists of projects that have good beginner friendly tasks that you can get started on a lot of the software that many of us use on a regular basis is open source and it's really nice to contribute to open source projects because you're able to give back to products and software that you probably are already using and you can gain some real experience working in a real code base and getting feedback from real developers in the process another great way to get experience when you don't have any experience and you're just getting started is to look for friends and family members who need websites. Everyone knows someone who might need a website. It might be a buddy of yours that's a musician. It might be a friend of yours that has his own small business. These are great people to reach out to because the truth is that when you tell a friend or a family member that you're interested in building something for them for free, nobody's really gonna say no to free. And even if it turns out to be a big piece of junk, nobody's really gonna complain and tell you that they don't like it because they got it for free. And it's just a good way to get a little bit of experience. It's something that I did when I was learning how to code. And it was just a way for me to be able to pad my resume and pad my portfolio a little bit when I was just getting started in order to show that I had some experience building websites for people. And building websites for friends and family could turn into potential money down the road. The thing is that when you build something for free for someone, usually they expect all following work and future work that's going to need to be done on that to be free as well and this can get a little complicated but there is a chance that you could make a little bit of money from your friends and family members if you decide to build them websites and later down the road they need you to add things to it or they may want you to build a nicer better website once you have some experience and you could make money from that but remember that when you're dealing with friends and family and doing things for free it's hard to charge people later on so just something to consider another great way to get some experience and maybe even make a little bit of money in the process is is to seek out organizations in your local area that you would like to do something nice for. You know, nonprofit businesses and local organizations such as your church or youth centers or places that might need a website that are doing nice things in your neighborhood that you wanna kinda give back and show some support to while being able to get a little bit of experience in the process. Another good way to potentially get some experience is to attend meetups and hackathons. If you attend a hackathon and you contribute to a project that's built over a weekend, you can definitely put that on your resume. Also, if you go to meetups, you'll meet a lot of local developers who might be able to help you look for work or tell you about positions or possible job opportunities in your area and you might meet some freelancers in your area who have too much work on their hands and you might be able to help them out with that a good way to find meetups is to use the meetup app and try to look for local developer groups in your area you can also check out Facebook groups if you're trying to find local meetups in your area as well if you're in a big city it might be easy for you to find some of these meetups and these hackathons if not just turn to the internet and see what you can find sometimes you can find online hackathons but usually local is better because many times those online hackathons aren't as personal as a local meetup or hackathon would be but if there are no meetups in your area your only option might be to go online and while we're on the topic of online let's talk about finding work on places like upwork freelancer fiverr and all those other freelancing platforms even craigslist when i was learning how to code i actually found a volunteer gig on craigslist and i used that to gain a little bit of experience and put that on my resume so any resource that you can check that can find you work or help you gain experience you need to kind of be resourceful and you need to set out to look for stuff and many of these online 
freelancing platforms can get you work, but you have to consider that when you're learning how to code and you don't have a lot of experience, it's going to be really hard to sell yourself to a client who is looking for someone who probably has experience. So what will end up happening is that you will likely sell your services for a much cheaper price than everyone else in order to get a job or do free work again, like I mentioned earlier. The truth is that I don't like telling people to work for free when they're learning how to code, but it's something that many of us have to do in order to get that experience. So sometimes you got to suck it up and do some free work and it sucks, but in the long run, it's going to benefit you. And then the last thing I'm going to mention is make your own experience. If you're not able to find any real experience out there, start building personal projects for real things that you want to build and real products that you want to build and real apps that you want to build and real websites that you want to build. And even though it may not be the next Google and it may not be the next Amazon and it may not turn into anything much bigger than just a personal project. If you package the things that you're working on and you build things that have a purpose and that solve a problem for people, it is a real world project and it is something that you built from scratch and it is something that can help people. And if you can get users to use these products, you can have even more talking points when you do get to an interview and you can mention all these things on your resume as projects and things that you have worked on. At the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do in order to get your experience and you got to do what you got to do in order to get that first job. And if you can't find any work to get real experience from, go make your own. All right. I think that's all I got to say here. If you've got any other ways of getting experience while you're learning how to code and potentially even making a little bit of money, let me know in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button. I'll see you next time.